yourself a disservice. Because it's not that your house wishes are showing you shaggy. It's just that you have not built capacity. So you thought, I've already built my capacity. Yeah, the Gentiles see you, but what about the kings? What about the kings? See, in God's word, every, every day is a new level. You cannot be in God. You cannot even look at yourself from Thursday to today and say that I still have the same mindset. Something should have shifted. At least one thing from one of the three people that have spoke so far, something should have shifted something in your mind. And so when you sit here... Awake, arise, in time bright, women of fire. You have been called to advance and to establish the frontiers of the kingdom of our God and of his Christ now. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? The end time bride is a center of incubation where weak ladies encounter the spirit of burning and are forged into women of power and grace who are ready to set their world on fire for Jesus. Arise and shine, O end time bride. Your time is now. Isaiah 54, 2 to 4. Isaiah 54, verse 2. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you shall expand to the right and to the left and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. Do not fear, for you will not be ashamed. Neither be disgraced, for you will not be put to shame. For you will forget the shame of your youth and you will not remember the reproach of your widowhood anymore. Amen. Shout a amen. amen. Shout a big amen. amen. Declare the Lord, the Lord is enlarging my territory. Today, my tent shall stretch in the name of Jesus. The purpose of God is to bring expansion. God's will for you is not to be mediocre. It is not to live a life of in excellence. It is not to have you always in tears. The address of God is a lowly spirit. It is a humble and contrite heart. If you are looking for God anywhere, look for a humble person. That is where he resides. He does not reside with the proud. He does not reside with the know-it-alls. But he resides with the humble. And after we have gotten this concept of humility, contriteness, broken-heartedness in the Lord, then he also reveals to us that while you are there, I also want to expand you. And so I needed to make sure you are sober enough to receive it and not get ahead of yourself. And so here we see in the verse 3, let us go back. For you shall expand to the right and to the left, and your descendants will inherit the nations and make the desolate cities inhabited. So this is the promise that God has given to you today. I am from the thought process that so long as I'm hearing a word, it is God speaking directly to me. It can be a church full of a million people. If the word on the altar is coming, it is for no one but me. And so this is what the Lord is telling you today, that he wants to expand you. He said, for you shall expand from the right to the left, to the point that you become a transgenerational blessing. Yeah. That not just your generation knows you, but your great, great, great grandchildren. They can testify that grandma and grandpa, they are the reasons why I can pray different types of prayers now. 
Verse 2 now. Enlarge the place of your tent and let them stretch out the curtains of your dwellings. Do not spare. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. So verse 3 is what he promised to do, but verse 2 is our responsibility. Now that you know that, let's read it again. He said, enlarge your tent. And let it stretch. So he says that I need you to build capacity. I need you to open up spiritually, mentally, physically, psychologically, every way which possible. And then verse 3 happens. But many of us think that the scripture says that he will expand your tents. It says, enlarge the place of your tent. That was a direction. You do it. You open up. You get more capacity. Because you got to know the only, the level of your blessing is in correlation to the level of your capacity. I cannot bless you more than what your car can fill. So if you have a small Tesla with a small trunk, it's only so much I can put in there. Now, if you have an Escalade where you can even put the seats back, so it's our responsibility to build. God's kingdom stands on principle. The principle is if you do the work and do the building of capacity, then me, I will bless you. And so you can't be praying for a husband and your capacity only can take a boy for one month. You can't be praying for an Escalade wife, but you don't even know how to drive a bicycle. Someone shout capacity. How is it that you have wine taste, but you got bare money? Does that make sense? You are asking for things that you cannot even hold. You want to hold a mic and preach to over a thousand people, but you don't read your word. So what you're going to stand up there and say, what if your, your iPad dies? What if the message that you, you so uh, curated from somebody's YouTube sermon. What if the iPad dies? What are you gonna do? So you are praying for capacity. You are praying that the Lord would, would increase you in a way, but you don't have capacity. Listen, even in the occult, even with those people who do black magic, the only thing black magic can do for a business per se is it now brings approval. So if you are a person who cooks and you go to the juju man and you say that, listen, I need my business to boom. The only thing they are doing is now bringing approval. For some reason, people begin to like it. But the only way you can sustain the juju magic is to know how to cook in the first place. So if you don't know how to cook, how are you going to a juju man or you are going to Jesus Christ, the mediator of our faith, to ask for anything? So he said that I need you to enlarge your tents. I want you to build yourself up. I want you to get to a level where you don't get so overwhelmed by everything. Yeah. 
You look crazy and you ain't got no kids. You always look tired. But you are praying for a husband or a wife and then you want six kids on top of that. That means you will be looking like a walking demon. You carry no capacity when you go through your small trials to even look good. So you don't look like the demon we are about to cast out. And now you want more responsibility? Am I talking to somebody today? You see, you're not going to shut my anointing down. I'm letting you know, straight no chaser. God needs you to build your capacity. We're sick and tired of your prayers being held somewhere because you carry no capacity. You can't even wake up early. A whole man, you sleep till thy kingdom come, but you want a wife who's gonna submit? And so if you're not careful, you are now always praying, I need a helper. See, when your capacity is limited, you stop at the realm of help. Every day you need help. I need help paying my rent. I need help with this. I need help with that. But when you grasp this principle here, that I'm supposed to do it, and God will aid to it. He will meet you at the point of your need. You begin to pray, Lord, give me investors. You didn't catch that. Your problems, when you tell people, will only bring you helpers. But when you carry vision and you carry a project, you now have investors. And so some of you, if God wanted to bless you, there is no business plan in the first place. And so every day it's help, help, help. Do you know grace is an investment? The Bible says that we move from glory to glory. We shine brighter and brighter. And so when we call upon the grace of God, there must be something there for the grace to fill. And so some of us, our capacity is so small. We faint at the, the, the sight of any small challenge. Our offense level is so high. And so God has to keep allowing the trials to continue until you finally pass the test. There are some of you, every time God is increasing you little by little by little, your demon of self-sabotage shows up. I'm going to talk. Grace is an investment, a divine investment in man to produce godly results on earth. That is what grace is. So every time you ask for grace to be a mother, that means there had to be something there in the first place. And the goal is always to make you a billboard for God's glory. So you stuck on still praying for a marriage when you should be praying for capacity. And so you got two wounded lovers coming together as one and your marriage the first week there's already contention you're praying for the wrong things so today god said i need them to increase in capacity today they will stretch their tents through prayer i want us to go to isaiah 5 3 to 4. If you don't know, God is also a wounded lover as well. Please read. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of <laughs> Judah, judge, please, between me and my vineyard, what more could have been done to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Why then, when I expected it to bring forth good Jesus. grapes, 
did it bring forth wild grapes. And now, please let me tell you what I will do to my vineyard. No, wait. So here we have God. He's like, I've created a vineyard. And in this vineyard, I have tilled the land. I have made sure the ground is good. The soil is rich. I've invested in this vessel. I've invested in this person. And he said, what did, what did this vineyard do? If you read in one of the scriptures, the Bible says that there was even a wine press in the middle of the vineyard because God had expectation that this thing would be able to yield some wine. God is a wounded lover. He's invested so much in you. He's made sure he cleared your schedule to come to prayer fest. He made sure that he's giving you sound teaching. Things that you can write down. Things that will, will, you will remember in your spirit. But you go back and go and have sex. You go back and masturbate. He's a wounded lover. Because he still loves us despite us producing the wrong grapes. Go back to the, the pre, yeah, this one. It says, what more could have been done? What more investment could I have given to them? I've set apart four days for them to pray, for them to receive, for them to deal with their hurts, their demons, for them to expand in capacity. And yet it's been a year and nothing has been produced by them. I've, he said, I planted the choicest vines. I prepared the vineyard. I took the stones out. I dug it out. Like he had an expectation. And so you must understand that when God is expecting from you and you are not delivering, there becomes an issue. Need I remind you, when Jesus was on his walk, he saw a fig tree, but the fig tree had no understanding because he thought, the fig tree thought, that I only flourish in certain seasons. But little did the fig tree know that Jesus is the season. When he comes on the scene, we must begin to bear fruit. And so this was the reason why Jesus he cursed the fig tree. He said, I'm expecting you to grow by now. I'm expecting you to change. I'm expecting your little pride issues, your little disrespectful nature to at least dissipate. But in fact, it's getting worse. And so he cursed the fig tree. Many of us, that's why me, you got to be careful when you're telling me stuff. It can get shaky. Because many of you are crying. And the man jilted me. And the girl played me. But the reality is, they saw a fig tree. They got closer. They saw some leaves. But when they stepped into the relationship, when they stepped into the marriage, they realized you was not bearing fruit. So they left. It's not a family demon. It's your inability to build capacity. You're going to get offended by me, but eventually the Lord will deal with you. You look nice from afar, but when we get to know you, we realize there's nothing to it. In G, we say, She eni kutreyem. There's nothing in there. There's nothing in there. When we look close, and so God is a wounded lover. He has invested so much in us and he gets frustrated because we're not building. We're not producing fruit. And so we're making this Christian walk seem like it's a joke because Pastors are some of the most disrespected people because the truth of the matter is some people when their lives fail, that's when they go into pastoring. 
And so now the world thinks that every time we ask you for money, it's for me to come and buy this. No. Wealth is not in a bank. Wealth is in the minds of people. I know how to make money for myself. Church or no church, things will get done. Poverty is a mindset. Poverty is a mindset. Poverty is not a real thing to me. And God dealt with us. I was sharing yesterday with someone. I was telling them that the way God deals with poverty, especially in the lives of believers, is asking you to sow nonsense amounts. Because what it does psychologically and in the realms of the spirit, if you think that $10,000 is a lot, for you, it's like my whole life. But the minute you sow it to the ground and it dies, and forget about it if the first lady looked nice and you think that she used your money, it will pain you. But eventually, eventually, a month, a year, you're like, I didn't die. So $10,000 was not the reason I was living in the first place. And so he breaks that mindset. So for me, he broke that mindset before I got with my husband. So $20,000 on the altar. A little girl. To do what? He had to break some things. That mindset that causes you to think that every little thing is... Ugh. And I told you guys, the day of, uh, we ended our 21-day fast, the Lord said it again. He said, 100K, you better go and sow it. And it was like, woo. But once we sold it, I'm still alive and I look better than I did. You think I'm playing, but I'm being serious. It breaks the mindset from off of you because God wants to expand you. He wants to give you more, but you are not willing to break. So you're like a rubber band. You stretch, but you always go back. And so some of us, we think we are stretching, but we'll revert back at the sign of any resistance. Very easy for you to just be like, you know, it is what it is. I'll just go back in my cocoon. So if I married you and you were a recluse, if I married you and you didn't like people, by the time we are at least two, three years in, you should be able to say hi to at least a few people. But in your mind, this is the way God made me and that's it. But God here is saying that I need you to expect, I need you to stretch. So that means our mindset is wrong. This is the way God made me. There's a realm of this is the way God made me and I can't change for nobody. But there's also another realm that God wants to do more with me. And so I need to expand. So you people who are so stuck in your ways, get unstuck tonight. And so the first assignment of God is to build capacity through his word. Acts 20, 32. Acts 20, 32. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. He said to build you up. And so if you are trying to, to wonder what am I talking about, he said that this is my will for you. To carry so much value in the word that the word the coming from the altar is like a prophetic word to you. Everything speaks to you. So again, we have the promise that I must build capacity before I get an inheritance. But we are praying for our inheritance and not building our capacity. And so we are running into issues. But this is the word of God. This is not me. He said that, so now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to do what? And then give you what? 
So how are you praying for an inheritance, but you have not been built up? Let's be real. I'm very, I'm a very spiritual person. But in the realms of the spirit, he gives you principles that are logical. How am I trying to get a church of a thousand people if my church cannot even fill up five people? Does that make sense? So I should be praying that, Lord, build my capacity to learn the word of God, to be able to preach, teach, and dissect the word of God. And then the people, much like John, even when I'm in the wilderness, they'll fly from Amsterdam. They'll come from DMV. They'll come from Massachusetts. Because as I build an excellent spirit, the gift attracts. The Bible says that a, a Gentile shall come to your light. So there's a realm where when you start doing good, people notice. They're like, girl, go ahead. You're doing your thing. Then there's another realm. It says that the, the rising of thy light brings the attention of the kings. So there's two realms to this. And so you thought, I've already built my capacity. Yeah, the Gentiles see you, but what about the kings? What about the kings? See, in God's word, every, every day is a new level. You cannot be in God. You cannot even look at yourself from Thursday to today and say that I still have the same mindset. Something should have shifted. At least one thing from one of the three people that have spoke so far, something should have shifted something in your mind. And so when you sit here unconcerned, in the name of I'm at prayer fest, not receiving anything, you do your own self a disservice. Because it's not that your house wishes are showing you shaggy. It's just that you have not built capacity. I'm all about deliverance. I live and breathe deliverance. Sometimes when apostles here, I tell him, babe, this one needs it. And he'll do his thing. I live and breathe it. But I also come from the mindset that God gave me a brain for a reason. If you don't learn how to upgrade yourself, the enemy will make you a laughing stock. That's why even in your first pregnancy, you didn't know better, you didn't know how to dress, things were a little chaotic. The second one, you better get some maternity clothes and say that I'm going to enjoy this one. By the time you have six, people are asking, how do you do it? Grace! for capacity. You want more than two kids, but you can't even take your little siblings. Today you gotta dismantle every stronghold in your mind. You are praying for things that your capacity cannot hold. Asking God for a house when you can't, you can't clean the bedroom that he's given to you. You're asking God, God, I need a two-family building. But if we walk into your room right now, I see a red sweater on the floor that has been there since Monday, and you keep trampling over it because you think it's normal. You're not going to like me, but it's okay. You guys are used to zombie messages. And so when you come to KFT and we shake you a little bit, you, you begin to get offended. But we thank God I don't care about your offense. It does not pay my bills. Period, Brittany. It does not pay my bills. See, that's why if you're a minister of the gospel, you got to have your own. Because there are people who will try to blackmail you and say that I won't help with this. But guess what? I have capacity. Leave me now. I'll be the media team. I'll be the secretary. I will come and preach. And I will do a live. I'm telling you. 
is one of those messages to provoke your spirit, to get you angry enough to be like, enough is enough. I built capacity for this. When I was in Buffalo, in the snow, I would be walking. My toes would have frostbite, but I'll make sure I'm the first one there to do opening prayer, to pray and lay hands on every chair, anoint the chair, and make sure that when he comes in, the atmosphere is stirred. My second daughter, my husband had to go and preach. Because I had built capacity, and I'm still building capacity, that day was the day that nobody came to church early. I was nine months pregnant, not eight and a half months. I was physically due. Took these speakers, there's about five of them, picked them up from here all the way to maybe the end of the parking lot by myself. Put every wire together by myself and we were in a, a classroom at that time it had kindergarten stuff on it I began to put the white papers on the walls because we didn't want to see the thing built myself in capacity preached the word of God while I was contracting my water broke my clothes were wet underneath my long dress I finished that message and some of you listen to it till this day so I'm preaching something that I live. I'm not preaching just to make you laugh, happy, or offend you. I live this. I'm very integral with the words that I preach. If I don't preach it, that means I ain't living it. And so if you hear it coming out of my mouth, that means God has dealt with me and is dealing with me concerning that matter. I know the mental that I carry. We are not raising a zombie church where when you come, the only message you hear is that you will get, you will get. No, you got to do something too. You have a responsibility. You got to pray. Men ought to always pray and not faint. And so we have people who are always praying for helpers but not investors. Because you don't have a project for us to invest in. You've never built your life past your need for help. Your need for help is as far as even your prayers go. It's not God, help me with this rent one time and then after it, I'm going to put together a business by your leading so that next time I, I can ask for an investor rather than a helper. And so why is God interested in you building capacity? Number one, when you lack capacity, you break. May the Lord give you the anointing to really see the scriptures behind the scriptures. I want us to read something in Luke 5, 4 to 7. Luke 5, 4. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. Their net was what? Breaking. All right, now I'm going to turn into an English teacher one second. I want you to go back. I'm going to teach you something. Go back one more. When he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let your nets with an S. Now let's go to the next scripture. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, The mind of Jesus and the mind of Peter were two different things. God is like your nets.
because I'm about to do something to blow your whole mind. But when we lack capacity, we move in the realm of one net. And then when he blesses us and it breaks, How did I miss that, right? <laughs> so he's, he's actually concerned with your capacity because he's like, I don't need one net. I need you to triple your nets and I need about 50 of them. And when you continue reading, you realize that they caught so much that their boat even began to sink. And so you can get a miracle and almost see I'm not finishing my words because the Holy Spirit is like I'm, I'm giving them the revelation and so your boat is sinking because of a miracle how is it that you finally pray for this marriage the man has come but now you got no capacity how did you pray for the CFO position? But you don't even know how to count your money. There's a disconnect here. And so he's concerned with it. I'll run through this. Number two, why is God interested in you building capacity? <laughs> Heavenly resources will be wasted in your life when you don't build capacity. John 6, 12. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost. Continue. Therefore, they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which were left over by those who had eaten which were left over by those. So Jesus has blessed you. God has blessed you. You are in a place of blessing. But when man is fully blessed, we become wasters. And so your life, if you think that you have reached a level, you are already wasting the things that God is trying to do. Here you have them. They left fragments of bread. Mind you, God, Jesus only did this miracle with just two loaves and five fishes. So that means a fragment to God can feed you for a whole year. But when you are filled, when you think you have arrived, when the answer is answered to your prayers, now you're like everything else, forget about it. We become wasters. And so God's will for us is to continually expand. How did I just catch that scripture with the nets? I have been reading the Bible literally for the past couple of years. Every day I read something and I'm like, how did I miss it all these years? God's will for you is to expand in capacity. I'm telling you, if you're sitting here and you're, even your fashion style has not changed, woe unto you. Still rocking a mullet from 1950 something and we're in 2023 and you expect a job. I'm... <laughs> Number three. Number three, the third reason why God is interested in building your capacity. You limit God. You limit him. Psalm 78, 41. Psalm 78, 41. Yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. When you don't build capacity, you tempt God and you don't allow him to bless you. He's a father. He's a good father. He's the great shepherd. His job is to bless and bless you indeed. Expand your territory. But every time you decide to be a waster, every time you decide that I will not build in capacity, then you limit God from doing what he has promised to do. Some of you, I can tell you now, that God literally wanted to give you a physical million dollars in your bank account. But he originally gave you $25,000 and you blew it. 
you blew it. Am I offending anyone? He planned to bless you, but because you lack capacity. You see, the wires in this house are different from the wires that are in my house. I don't know much about the electricity realm, but the little that I do know is that these wires that are under here behind the walls, they are a combustion of wires that are put together because it needs that kind of voltage for this place. But if I put the same wires in my house, I can blow my house. Capacity. <laughs> The fourth reason why God is interested in building your capacity is when you lack capacity, you use divine gifts to show off unnecessarily. You are ignorant of the reason why you even carry the gift in the first place. Numbers 11, 16, and 17. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather to me 70 men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tabernacle of meeting, that they may stand there with you. Then I will come down and talk with you there. I will take of the spirit that is upon you and will put the same upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with you, that you may not bear it yourself alone. So I'm going to do a new thing, and I'm going to put this spirit on a whole bunch of people so they too can go preach and prophesy. Now let's go to verse 25. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took of the spirit that was upon him and placed the same upon the 70 elders. And it happened when the spirit rested upon them that they prophesied although they never did so again. See, God was trying to give them the spirit of Moses so they can help the work advance. And so he tested them with a little bit. And the Bible says that they began to prophesy. And their prophecy was not fruitful. And so it kind of, it kind of limited the plan of God. Because they were using divine gifts wrongly. Instead of the same spirit that Moses had, that he was not going around prophesying and doing the most. How is it that he gives it to you and you want to be as loud as a clanging cymbal? When you lack capacity, you are so easily moved by everything. Easily impressed by everything. And so you get a Tesla and you want the whole world to know. Girl, sit down. I was sharing with Sister Amma that when my husband bought me my car, if you go back and look at my reaction, I didn't even know what kind of car it was. I had never heard of a Tesla before. Yes, why? Never had heard of one. And so for me to go and flex with it, it took me a long time to even post it because I'm like, what is the severity of this car that everyone has? See, when, when you are so content at times and someone comes to try to impress you with certain things, it's not that you are ungrateful. It's that I have learned to be content with myself, with or without the Tesla. And so when you give me the Tesla, I am now appreciative of you more than the Tesla. But when you are just easily moved by material things and divine gifts, when somebody gives you a Tesla, I should have been showing off the Tesla more than my husband. But I praise my husband and I praise him till thy kingdom come. That the man even thought in his mind to consider me, to buy me a gift just to honor me. So why wouldn't my marriage continue? Because my appreciation is not in so much of the car. It's in the man that God used. So these people caught a little wind of the, the spirit of Moses and they began to start doing nonsense with it. And so God is really 
he's really worried about us building capacity. Otherwise, when he gives you a few sheep, you start to act up. When he blesses you with a small something, now you don't know how to act. Get a million dollars, you'll come and slap us in the face and say, pray for me now. Get one little degree. We cannot seat you in the back of the church anymore. You got to be in the front. One little something that God is testing you with before he really blesses you. He tests your capacity. You ever did a litmus test? You dip the thing in the water a little bit and then it begins to permeate. That's what God does with some of us. He's like, let me give her one child and see what she's going to do. You, you don't teach your kid no kingdom principles. You, you don't respect your husband. You, you don't pray over your child. But you want another gift so that you can abuse? No. This is some hard truths, but it must be told to you. You're welcome. See, Solomon asks for capacity to lead, wisdom. 1 Kings 3.11 1 Kings 3, 11. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your word. Mm. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall anyone like you arise after you. Continue. And I have also given you what you have not asked, mm. both riches mm. and honor, mm. so that there shall not be anyone like you among the kings all your days. So I asked not for the husband, but I asked for wisdom to dwell with a husband. And he was like, I'm attracted to this type of prayer, this kind of capacity building prayer, this kind of prayer to build you up. And so you know what? Now you deserve a husband. God is attracted to those kind of capacity building prayers. He's not really attracted to give me the house, give me the car. God, give me wisdom on how to dwell with this man. Give me wisdom on how, well, how to maintain cars before you give me one. Some of you need an oil tune-up anyway. Walking around three years without one. Someone say mercy. So that is why God is concerned. Now we move on to the purpose of your capacity. I'm giving you enough food so that when you pray, you have enough energy. Amen. Something got to hit you. At least one thing that I said has to hit you enough for the Holy Ghost to finally deal with you. The purpose of your capacity. Number one, what you can do to contain. What you can contain. The purpose of your capacity is so that you can increase and contain more. Psalm 81.10. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt. Open your mouth wide, and I will fill it. So the purpose of increasing your capacity in the first place is so that he can fill it. He would not tell you to open your mouth wide if he was not going to fill it. And so today, even when it comes to speaking in tongues, those of you who don't speak in tongues, by revelation of this scripture, when you open your mouth wide, God has to fill it. He is concerned with filling you. Number two, the purpose of your capacity is so that you can get a supply from heaven. 2 Kings 3 to 4. Now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, became king over Israel. No, this is the wrong scripture. I'm looking for the lady with the jars. Well, 
What is it? Second Kings. First Kings 17. And Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. No. Second Kings 4. A certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, Your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, Go borrow vessels from everywhere from all your neighbors. Empty vessels, do not gather just a few. And when you have, come in. You shall shut the door behind you and your sons. Then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. Mm. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons. Who brought the vessels to her? And she poured it out. Now it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. And he said to her, There is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. So the oil has ears. The oil has ears. Divine supply is only as much as your capacity can hold. The jar, the minute the boy opened his mouth, the oil stopped. And so some of us are being divinely supplied by God, but it's only at the level of our capacity. God is like, I want to blow your mind, but your capacity is too small. I want to put you in a leadership position. I want to make your name great. I want to give you the goods of the land, but your capacity is too small. For you, one year in church is like too much. Your capacity only goes for every other month. Every month you must miss church at least two to three times because your capacity can only take being in the kingdom of God one Sunday a month. So you are a spiritual roller coaster. So even when divine supply wants to meet you, the jars have stopped. Some of you carry a gift of healing. You carry a strong gift. It even smells on you. But your capacity can literally only heal a headache. But God was waiting for you to get into the realms of the spirit, get into some fasting, some prayers, get into the word to increase your faith so that you can be known as the woman who healed stage four cancer on the spot in this generation. Some of you, I'm telling you, you carry dynamic gifts. The way God deals with me is I begin to see stuff on people's head. Some of you, you carry a strong uh, uh, writing. You know how to write very well. But the most you can do is a Facebook post. Meanwhile, God is trying to expand you to write a book that will change the trajectory of someone's life. But you are so limited in capacity. Some of you, he actually does want to give you a mansion. Like he genuinely wants to bless you with a mansion. But your capacity to even mow the lawn on summer days is limited. And so here we have that the oil heard and it stopped. Purpose of your capacity Number three, your capacity gives you the opportunity to take advantage. Proverbs 21, 31. 
Proverbs 21, 31. The horse is prepared for the day of battle. But deliverance is of the Lord. So deliverance comes from God, but the horse must be prepared. I will meet you at the point of your need. If, if it was a scripture, this is it. The horse must be prepared for the day of battle. So deliverance cannot come to you and you are not prepared. I'm going to keep hearing, I'm going to keep hitting marriage. Because a lot of you, it's not that your house witches have resisted you. You broke those altars down. You just don't carry the capacity to now receive the giant of the man of God that God is bringing you. Imagine me having a small capacity. A husband just had to go run and, and take care of something. So we were going to stop prayer fest at 11 something because his wife carried no capacity to preach the word. Come on. Celebrate the man who gave me a Tesla. We celebrate you, Apostle. So deliverance comes from the Lord. But you got to be prepared for it. That's why we say deliverance is for the desperate. So note to self, all of you guys who are harassing us, that my mom, my dad, unless they are willing to come in this house, unless their hearts are prepared, they will sit here and be annoyed by us. The presence of us will annoy them. So unless they are ready, so again, now a shift the prayer point. The prayer point is that, Lord, prepare their hearts as they go. Deliverance is available. God wants to deliver us. But are you ready? Is your heart prepared? Now, quickly, there are three areas that you must build capacity in. Number one, spiritual capacity. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you don't build spiritual capacity, you will never be able to travail. Some of you, you come here, you pray a little bit. After one hour, it's like, I got to go because you carry no spiritual capacity. Some of you, 12-hour prayer, you literally leave at the four-hour mark. Today, the Lord must increase your spiritual capacity. If you only had capacity to hear the word of God for 30 minutes, you, this church, you're going to hear it for at least five hours. If you only had capacity to pray 20 minutes and then something disrupts you out of the spirit, today we will disrupt what disrupts you. Remember, it's not about the length of prayers. But it is about building up yourself in your most holy faith by speaking in an unknown tongue. So Jude was not lying. The number, the second thing that you must build in is mental capacity. Proverbs 23, 76. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. As a man thinks, so is he. I told you, poverty is a mindset. I came to the conclusion around my college days that money I don't chase. Money chases me. I had to shift my mind. And so I have never been a slave to a nine to five that does not allow me to do the work of God because I trust God enough to know that as so long as money chases me with or without a job, I'm going to have money. Some of you, you need a mind shift. We walk on money. Money cannot walk on me. If you don't learn to change your mind, you will become a slave to Babylon. When I worked nine to five, probably the only person that genuinely enjoyed it at my company. Why? Because I carried a mind shift. 
The mind shift was that if I am doing all this leadership stuff and I'm learning these things, even my mistakes are now on someone else's dime. So everything I was doing, whether I was learning or making mistakes, I'm like, I'm learning it on someone else's dime. Because a time will come where God will require me to do my own and I cannot afford to lose money or time because I wasted my time. When you learn how to invest your time, everything that you are doing, you know that it will benefit you later on. Today you must have a mind shift. If you are the executive assistant at your job place, you better learn how to book flights. You better learn the, the days, times, and seasons where you book flights. You better learn that you should go in incognito mode on your phone to, to look for certain things so that the flight prices don't go up. So by the time God gives you your own, or by the time he gives you a promotion, now you know how to book a flight for half the price that a normal person... Wealth is not stored up in banks, but in the hearts of men. If you don't grow in capacity, if mentally you don't have a mind shift, my mind shifted a few years back that Sundays are dedicated to God and nothing else. My children, even when they wake up on Sunday, they know Superbook. We watch Superbook a lot, but they have known that on Sunday, that is the Lord's day, and therefore, moving forward, anything that happens on the Sunday must revolve around the things of God, if nothing at all else for the week. You got to learn that your mind, the more you think that marriage is this way, that's the more you're walking it, and it might not be the best way. So you got to learn how to upgrade yourself. Just because your mother did it this way does not mean it's right. I give thanks for my mom. She's a real one. You think I'm a real one? My mom is a real one. She'll tell me, mommy, the kind of things that I did in my marriage with your father, had I known better, your father would still be alive. If, you don't, if your mother don't tell you the truth, my mom does. And so she'll quickly straighten me up. Hey, don't go and walk in a fence like I did. You break the hedge. You, you, you got to have a mind shift. Other than that, every day you will be in the same situation. And so if you're not careful, you will grow spiritually, but then you will hinder the mental side of things. God is teaching you that I will fill your barns. He's teaching you that the ways of Babylon are the, not the ways of the church. And so every day you are now confused. But God is like, I want to restructure your mind. The third thing you must build capacity in is emotional capacity. Come on. Proverbs 25, 28. Whoever has no rule over his own spirit mm. is like a city broken down without walls. Enough with the, the nonsense. You got to grow up. If we yell at you, get offended, you got five minutes, it may hurt. After that, you get over it and let's move on. Let's move God's agenda. If you and your husband, your wife get into it, all right, a few minutes, half the day, that's fine, but I'm not going to bed angry. Grow up. Someone say grow up. Emotional capacity. Every day your friends have to suck up to you. If they tell you an opposing opinion, it is woe unto them. Grow up. When too will you be the bigger person? Every day it's an issue. Some of you are in the situation that you're in because of emotional capacity. You don't have any. The smallest thing happens. There are certain church members, we literally, my husband says it all the time, we literally be on our knees praying that, Lord, do not let them lose their job. Because if they do, that's like seven deliverance sessions. 
Because we know that he or she is not coming to church. He or she will not do their work. He or she will begin to make a gap in the work of God. It's like we, we spend time praying. And so such prayers, God will listen. And so God will always keep you at your job. Meanwhile, he probably needed you to get laid off to build some skill and go back and get a better job. But because you are so emotionally dwarfed, now it's like we got to pray that, Lord, keep her as the cashier. It is fine. Because if she loses this job, it's lights out. Some of you, it's so bad that when, when your house is, is in disarray and you come to church, we can smell it on you, we can see it on you, we can hear it on you. When will you not look like the demon that we are trying to cast out? Some of you, it's all over you. It's all over you. And you see, the thing about mindsets as well, too, is we have taken the kingdom of God to be nothing. And so I should rather dress up in these nice clothes for a wedding and everything else, every other occasion. But to come and preach the word of God, I should look like a fool. The devil is a liar. You got to build yourself up. As you can see throughout the scriptures, God keeps saying, build yourself, build yourself, expand, do more, read more, do this. You can't come to prayer fast and leave the same. You cannot come. Those of you who are preachers, Facebook preachers, when we look at your 2015 Facebook preaching verses now, we better see increase in your knowledge of the word. Or else we're excommunicating you. Don't preach again till you learn. Emotional capacity. If you were scolded by your mom and you used to have a whole tantrum, go into your room for one whole week without eating. After this prayer fest, when you are scolded, in fact, you say, mom, give me a hug. Let her think you're crazy. You can clap for that one. Today, I woke up and literally heard the words capacity. Like the first thing I heard, to the point that I opened my eyes to look at my husband, and I'm like, he's still sleeping though. So it was God that told, build capacity. Your deliverance should not be taking so long. I'll tell you the truth. If you have enough light in you, and we come, and we command those demons out, you should have enough spiritual, emotional capacity that when we command it out, it's out. Now lastly, how do you build capacity? Then we'll get into prayer. Number one, Daniel 11.32. Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Knowledge brings growth. Growth builds capacity. Knowledge builds growth or brings about growth and growth builds capacity. Those who do know their God will do the exploits. So if I'm not a person who, who believes in knowledge, then I would never succeed and build anything you gotta be a person who is willing to learn get books on marriage read the bible the scriptures on marriage the business go and get knowledge on that business don't just come here and testify that i got an llc we all got an llc where's your 100k testimony Job 32, verse 7, 7 to 9. I said, age should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. But there is a spirit in man, and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. Whoa. Great men are not always wise, hmm. 
nor do the aged always understand justice. Wow. So just because your hair is gray don't mean you're so smart after all. It is by knowledge that we grow. It is by knowledge that we expand. It's not by your gray hairs. Knowledge expands men. You must desire the sincere meat, the milk and the meat of God. Knowledge brings growth. Growth brings maturity. Maturity brings about capacity and strength. So you shouldn't be so happy that you're growing in age but not in wisdom. When you finish, go back and listen to this a thousand times. <laughs> How do we build capacity? One, knowledge. Number two, that's what we're about to do, prayer. Jude 1, 20. Jude 1, verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Today we're going to expand in capacity. Today we will expand in capacity. If you neglect prayer, you neglect capacity. Prayer brings about capacity. So anyone who does not like to pray, you are a spiritual dwarf, you are a mental dwarf, you are a physical, you are just a dwarf. Because what prayer does is like a detox. It cleanses you out. Because the more you pray, now God is giving you insight on what to exactly pray about. And so now God is rearranging things inside of you. How many of you want to build in capacity today? No, how many of you sincerely want to build in capacity? Because the promise of the Lord is that he wants to bless you wild. He wants to make you a miracle sign and wonder. He wants people to talk about you and say, I need to go where he goes. I need to serve the God that she serves. God doesn't want you to always be the last amongst your equals. He wants you to be the first amongst your equals. You too, you can have a testimony. You too. You can be celebrated too. But you got to be willing to build your capacity. Next year by this time, I prophesy that emotionally, spiritually, mentally, financially, in your marriage, with your children, in your health, that your capacity will be so wide, so big, so strong, so wide, that the Lord would bless you and bless you indeed. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He said, no, by the end of this year, I want to make this happen. By the end of this year, There are mentals and there are mentals. You gotta understand, a mental is a dimension of God that he wants to portray on this earth. One of the mentals, by the grace of God, that is on the Osei household, by the grace of God. Two, there's a mental of prayer and there's a mental of wealth. And I prophesy to you today, if I be a prophet of God, if God has called me for this generation, if God has anointed my voice, if he has appointed me for this generation, I prophesy that your prayer life is about to skyrocket. The spirit of prayer is about to break loose on you. And I prophesy that the same wealth that came upon the Osei household will come upon you and you will pay things off at a level a rate in which we have never seen before.
Sister Elena was in an Uber the other day. And the man literally has been basically spying on KFT for years. And he was playing a song and Elena didn't know. So she said, oh, you're a Ghanaian. And he said, yes. And she began to, of course, my pastors are Ghanaian. But the man already knew who she was before she knew who he was. See, this mic that we hold, and the man began to ask her questions. And one of the questions he asked, how is it that they are able to pay for stuff with cash? Are they doing something? And what he was trying to get Elena to say is that we are doing some juju nonsense. We got like a cow's blood underneath the foundation. So he needed to hear something because the thing don't make sense. The thing don't make sense. It made sense. How is it? You paid off your house. You got a whole land. You paid off this building. God is about to do something else. It don't make sense. I prophesy that your financial strength will not make sense. That your financial strength will not make sense. That people will come and question what kind of money, what kind of grace, what kind of fruit you are walking in. If I were you, I would begin to thank God right now. Begin to thank God in prayer. Lift up your voice. Come on, pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Lift up your voice. Oh, shut up. Let's get into prayer. Some deposits will be made today. For this revelation, for this mind shift, for doing something new. Say, Father, Father, I give thanks. I give thanks because your will for me, because your will for me, is to bear fruit. Is to bear fruit on all sides. On all sides. Today, today, I ask. I ask that anything, that anything that hinders this, that hinders this, this will, this will for me, for me, as I begin to pray, as I begin to pray under open heavens, under open heavens, release me, release me, release me, release me, release me, release me. Lift up your voice. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 
Jesus. Say, I come against, I come against the, spirit the spirit of laziness, of laziness that, holds me that holds me in one spot, in one spot that hinders me, that hinders me from, expanding from expanding my tents. My tents. As I begin to pray, As I begin to pray today, today, I neutralize, I neutralize its hold, its hold over, me. over me. I rebuke, I rebuke every spirit, every spirit of, laziness. of laziness. As I begin to pray, turn me with strength. Come on, this man 
Bless your heart. Come on, pray. Come on, pray. Everything that has you in a spiritual chokehold today. must grow financially you must grow in the favor and in stature you must grow those days of playing small ball are over say every sin every sin and iniquity and iniquity in my life in my life that is working that is working against my spiritual growth against my spiritual growth I ask I ask for the mercies of God, for the mercies of God to release me, to release me as I pray, as I pray under open heaven, under open heaven today, today, Spirit of the Lord, of the Lord release, me release me for growth, for growth and expansion, and expansion. Release, me release me for growth, for growth and, expansion. and expansion. Come on, pray. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
for this morning session. Yes, Lord. Release it unto me. Yes, Lord. Release it unto me. Yes, Lord. This is your hour of visitation. Yes, Lord. Listen, we have a lot of giants in this house. You don't just like us just to like us. Your spirit is bearing witness. You carry an anointing that not every church, pastor, man, woman of God, God is releasing graces, yes. Yes. As you lift your hand, the Holy Ghost will touch you. Yes, Lord. Please be your brother's keeper. Holy Ghost. Fire. Release the grace. Yes, Lord. Grace for marriage. Yes, Lord. Grace for motherhood. Grace for fatherhood. Open up the wounds of the barren. Oh, release those who are mantled for wealth. Mantled for wealth. Mantle for wealth. Release, release, release. Come on, cry out for an outpouring. Oh, 
lifted up. The Lord said that he's given the men a new sound. When you open your mouth next, the Holy Ghost will take over your tongue. This sound will be birthed out every time you are in need of strength. It will not be the regular tongues that you speak. But every time you recognize this sound, that is the another level sound. That is the sound that God is giving you when he is endowing you with strength. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, you intoxicate. Men pray. Holy Ghost, you pray until the sound is birthed. Come on, pray. We want to hear the men roar. Yes, I said, go higher, go higher, go higher. You need this strength for later on. Oh, receive a sound, receive a sound. Yes, release yourself, release it, release the sound. This one is a war sound. He's given it to the men, a sound of war. Women, lift up your hands. This sound that is being birthed out of you. Some of you will need it to push. 
physically. In the labor room, as that sound comes, the baby comes. Some of you will need it in your time of war. When the marriage is shaky, the regular tongues won't come out. This sound, you must recognize as there is a war. When the miscarriages decide to creep in, this sound. When the diagnoses come, this sound. May the Lord open your ears to, to recognize the sound and the voice of God. Because the sound will precede you even knowing that you are in a war. Your spirit will be able to identify that this is not my regular tongues. That means there's a war somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Receive it. Receive what God is doing. Yes. Don't hold back. You don't need a song. Jesus. Ah! Jesus, 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 Jesus.
to Jesus. He had you in mind. The Lord said he is in need of you. So he wants you to be intentional about increasing your capacity. And I also heard <laughs> KFT Canada. Hey. <laughs> For the appointed time will come. Amen. Rocky, build your capacity. That's all I'm going to say. Build your capacity. I want us to thank God. Yes, Lord. Thank him for how far he has brought you yes, Lord. in increasing you. No, 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 no. Just want you to spend at least two minutes thanking God. He's giving you a responsibility to be intentional about your spiritual growth, intentional about your mental capacity, intentional about your emotional capacity. He said if you would be intentional with it, in the next 72 days, you will experience my hand. You will experience my hand. Abba Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. And as we shout, we go back to our seat. Amen. Thank you for watching The End Time Bride. We pray that you were edified, equipped, and empowered through the word to establish the kingdom of God and of his Christ everywhere that your souls of your feet tread. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to reach every end time bride worldwide. Stay blessed.